Welcome back folks. Just a quick little video on the market environment for your dollar. And kind of like recap on what I mentioned in the previous recording for the YouTube channel. So I mentioned on the euro we would most likely sweep that 118.50 level and it's directly related to this high, these relative equal highs. And I said we would likely see it run those. And we got it on Thursday, today, uh, August 27th, 2020. The economic calendar came with, obviously, the Fed Chairman, Powell, speaking in the New York session. And his comments were basically in line with allowing the current environment to remain intact so that was met with a repricing aggressively higher and lower now the, now the comments I've been placing on my community tab on the inner circle trader YouTube channel I mentioned the importance of market profiles now when I say that invariably people that trade market profile uh, they will think that I'm referring to that, and that's not what I'm referring to. Mar market profiling, by my definition, is very specific, like, templates, okay? How the market should pan out or, or deliver in price. One of the hardest ones to operate in is Seek and Destroy, as I mentioned on the Community tab this week. And we are looking at that profile okay so uh, one of the things I get questioned a lot about in email from members that follow this YouTube channel and my teachings is how to know when a market environment is a seek and destroy because if you can learn those characteristics those traits then hopefully you will avoid d demolishing your account and trading back and forth you know trying to capture the next big move uh, because that's generally what this profile will end up enticing traders to do uh, a big move will happen on the upside and they'll think it's either a reversal or it's a continuation and it's just back and forth and it just completely grinds you down so i don't want to speak too much about this because uh, obviously most of you are not going to see value in this because you probably are really new and you want to see me point to this is a buy signal this is a sell signal this is a secret order block this is a secret breaker <laughs> all those things I think if you were versed enough or at least seasoned with trading with live funds and have lost money uh, a discussion like this even though it may be as brief as it is will be more meaningful to you. Now, if you're a new trader or student, uh, that idea will go right over your head, okay? Not because of a lack of intelligence, it's just because your perception and perspective on the marketplace is not yet in line with what would be closely related to someone who has engaged in real risk, okay? So um, one of the main focuses of my channel here is to help you avoid pain and pain in its purest sense in trading is the removal of funds <laughs> when you are no longer solvent okay you blow your account that's what I'm trying to help you avoid because if you can avoid doing that you'll stay in the game long enough to find your own method and own approach to using the things that I teach okay so Right away, you can see that we have had a market that has been range bound. Okay, it's been consolidating. And when you see markets that are stuck like this, right away, my mind says, okay, try not to expect a whole lot in terms of big moves higher or lower. And watch how price tends to gravitate back to the middle. Okay, or equilibrium. There may be quick surges of price movement higher that fizzle out quickly. And then it pulls back to the middle. And then there'll be moves that drop down quickly. It fizzles out and comes right back to the middle of the range as well. So 
if you look at how the market has just moved back and forth all week until today, Thursday, we had this event here, which, which is what I was suggesting at we would run the 118.50 buy side liquidity. And if you watch the video I put on prior to this one, you'll actually hear me say that that's what we were doing. And I covered the difference between Wyckoff and IPTA, Interbank Price Delivery Algorithm. And when you look at price action like this, it's not hard to understand how it's being controlled and it's manipulated. So if you look at the annotations I'm going to put here, it's really simple stuff. We're looking at Monday's high here and then Wednesday's low. And all the buy side liquidity that would be resting above these levels here, that's what I took your attention to. I said that we would look for this event here. Now this was a lot more than I personally expected. So I didn't expect this much of a run up just today. I didn't expect that. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you, yeah, I, I, I saw this coming. I traded it. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any participation in any all that. So I didn't see it coming. Um, I wasn't able to capitalize on any of it. And the fact that we have Jackson Hole today, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically when all the, the folks come together that help formulate the, uh, the next agenda. <laughs> I'll just say it that way. And they have a lot of influence on the marketplace and the things that they talk about, uh, the things that they're planning. Sometimes they get leaked, sometimes they don't. Um, and again, without trying to sound too tinfoil hat, uh, just know that it can create volatility in the marketplace. Now, introduce that also with the Fed chair speaking today uh, during a New York session, and we got this here. Okay, now this is still an optimal trade entry here and a run above the 1850 level that I hinted at that you should be focusing on this week. It expanded, went 51 pips beyond that, quickly reversed and traded all the way back down and took out Wednesday's low. So that was the intra week, the lowest low of the week. It took that out, and now we went right back to the middle of the range. Okay, so if you don't know what a seek and destroy market profile is, that's what it looks like right here. This is what it looks like. So in your own journals, in your own note-taking, you want to print this out. Not, not necessarily my chart, but you want to do it on your own platform and then save those charts and then study how price has moved back and forth but generally back into consolidation. So now what does it mean? What do you do with this information? Well, this is why I sit on my hands and I try not to engage the marketplace. And as I mentioned on my community tab on the YouTube channel, I put levels on and I watch to see if they get checked. Okay, now when a level is checked, I wanna see how it trades after it hits it. Obviously the 118.50 level, we breached it and then quickly gave up the ghost and went right back down below. Wednesday's low. So this liquidity was also taken as well. So think about what's happened here. We've consolidated the entire week. Then Powell comes out, gives us a jaw boning. Markets react with a run here and then collapses and then right back to the middle. So what are we left with? Right now, uncertainty. Okay, there's no clear indication, at least for me. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of like showing you my hand, and I've already uh, elaborated on it in the community tab in my posts, but when you see a market environment like this, or at least I see it like this, I'm not in a hurry to take a trade because we haven't had really any displacement. We've had a run on liquidity, both sides, and we're back in the middle. There is no clear discernible direction as of right now at this moment. Now, there are things that could lead to a directional bias unfolding over the coming days and weeks. But as for right now, gun to my head, I have to fold my hands and say there's nothing I can do here. There's nothing. There's absolutely no There's no trade here for me personally that I would feel comfortable assuming the risk on. So, as I was building up into this discussion, uh, we were looking at market profiles for... A point of discussion on the community tab on the YouTube channel 
and you can see the effects of it here. Okay, so again, in summary, when we see market environments that are consolidating, okay, now this is spread out over the entire week. So this would be a so this would be a seek and destroy market profile for a weekly profile. And it can exist in intraday where we have market environments that have consolidations and then it has a whipsaw effect and then it goes right back to the middle of the range. So we don't want to operate or engage the market when it's like this. We want to wait for the large funds to start building in positions and allow the central bank to provide the liquidity for that. And then these larger moves when they start and they become very clear in the charts, then it's easy to ride the coattails. But until we get those very clear indications in price action, we are sitting on our hands. And there's absolutely no shame in that. There's no fear of missing a move and we're not feeling impulsive to chase any little minor reaction, if you will, in price. And we're not believing that we can forecast the next big price move higher or lower when it's in this environment. We let the professionals at the central bank level and the large funds do their dance together, okay? Uh, whatever the large funds start building in, you know, in terms of the next position, the central banks will facilitate that and allow the liquidity for them to do so. Right now, it's not clear as to what that is yet. And when it starts to develop, it'll be clear, it'll be obvious. We will leave the range that was created today, moving below this low or above this high in a decisive manner. And then we can watch price for the next month to three months in terms of what the next directional bias would be. As of right now, if you were trading euro or really majority of the pairs right now you are gambling you're absolutely gambling because there's no clear discernible direction for any of them at the moment we could be in transition where there could be a, a longer term trend change which i try not to forecast and, and try to pick bottoms and tops i don't try to do that or we could just be in a long pause that continues higher for euro and lower for dollar so because of that 50-50 nature, I don't trade with 50-50 gearing. I don't like to see those types of setups. I want to know what the bank is most likely going to reprice to, higher or lower. And if it's not one-sided, then I'm not engaging. Now, I can share my ideas and comments and suggestions about what might take place, but that's not the same as putting down money in a trade and saying, I'm going to assume risk on that. So regardless of where you are in your journey as a trader, it's important to understand topics like this because it gives you the confidence and the patience that's required to sit still and not feel the impulse to go into the marketplace and trade because there's not always a time to be doing something. Okay, Many times you're going to be doing nothing and knowing when not to do anything is wisdom and when you have that wisdom it allows you to operate objectively in the marketplace and you don't feel the effects of fear and greed or fear of missing out on anything. And if you can conquer that, regardless of where you are in your development, that's one of the major hurdles in consistency. Because if you can cross that and understand why you're not looking to take a trade, why are you willing to sit on the sidelines and not even care too much about what the price is doing, because eventually there's going to be some excitement coming in the marketplace and it'll be more meaningful than what we see here. Okay. So I just want to kind of comment on it a little bit and bring the light a little bit more to what I was saying in the community tab. And hopefully now you can see with a chart in front of us, what seek and destroy looks like. It's a lot of volatility that goes right to liquidity and then back to the middle. And while that is, in theory, tradable, it has to be done so in a nimble fashion. And most traders aren't that nimble. So hopefully you got something out of this. I know it's not an exciting topic, but it is one that is necessary for you to have longevity in this industry. So until I talk to you next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.